Hi everyone, this is a short video lecture, Introduction to Statistics. So in business, statistics has these important specific uses. To summarize business data, to draw conclusions from those data, to make reliable forecasts about business activities, and to improve business processes. So the definition of statistics is a branch of mathematics that transforms numbers into useful information for decision makers. This is the noun definition. The second definition, statistics is a collection, presentation, or organization analysis and interpretation of data. This is the verb definition. So in research, we normally apply the verb definition of statistics. We collect the data, we present and organize the data, we analyze, and finally, we interpret. There are two types of statistics. The first one is descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics are the methods that help collect, summarize, present, and analyze a set of data. So you simply are collecting, summarizing, presenting, and also ana analyzing data. For inferential statistics, these are methods that use the data collected from a small group to draw conclusions about a larger group, meaning you need to apply methods in which you are able to get samples and make proper interpretation using statistical analysis. This is where the statistical analysis comes in and you are able to provide interpretation or conclusion based on the small group or the samples you have collected data from. Uh, these are the uses of statistics. So we have sports, education, government, medicine, and physical sciences, psychology and business and economics. In sports, normally these are descriptive statistics. Say, say for example, in boxing, Mani Pacquiao, yes, win record, loss record, draw record. In basketball, there are statistics for points per game, rebounds per game, and so on and so forth. So these statistics actually determine what kind of athlete you have. Another one is education, which is also in descriptive statistics. So normally these are data in enrollment, graduations or graduates, number of students, number of learners, and so on and so forth. For government, these are record in the offices. Uh, say, for example, in the National Statistics Office, we have the record for death, birth, marriage, so on and so forth. For medicine and physical science, normally inferential statistics is used. Say, for example, the vaccine for COVID-19, it undergoes a lot of clinical trials and it determines how efficient it is. Uh, whether it's 90% effective, 99% effective, and so on and so forth. So if there's already an interpretation or conclusion about the data taken from samples, then that is already an inferential statistics. For psychology, normally psychologists uh, apply statistics in order to observe individuals or group of people. They make use of descriptive and inferential statistics. For business and economics, you actually need both descriptive and inferential statistics in order to come up with proper decision making. Those are just a few examples of the uses of statistics. We now go to the first procedure or the verb definition of statistics. This is the collection of data. There are two types of uh, data being collected. The first one is primary data and the second one is secondary data. So for primary data, these are data gathered directly from original source on which based on a direct or first-hand experience. So say, for example, an interview. That's a one-on-one -on -one interview. That's a primary data collected from the interviewee. Or another example would be a diary. That is a primary data because all the information written on a diary is a first-person count. Another one is an autobiography. It's also primary data. For secondary data, information which are taken from published or unpublished data. So when it's already published or unpublished, say for example, newspapers, television news, and other books which are published or unpublished, those are already categorized as secondary data. In business reports, these are already secondary data when you are gathering all the information from those record books. So there are ways of collecting data. These are methods. We have direct method. This is normally the interview method. This is a face-to-face -face interaction or one-on-one -on -one interaction. Indirect method for educational research, normal method used. Third would be registration method. So you can apply direct method, indirect method, but you can get some information from the records of the offices. 
So in government offices or in private organization, you can check their registration area and gather information from those offices. The fourth one is observation method. Uh, these are normally done by psychologists, so they observe behavior of people or organization. And for the fifth one, experiment method, normally done by scientists or physicists, and it undergoes scientific method. Now, before collecting data, you actually need to determine your samples. So here are some few examples of sampling technique. There are only two methods for sampling techniques. It's either non-probability sampling or probability sampling. For the first, you actually don't need to use random selection. So this may include propulsive samples, noble samples, quota samples, and convenience samples. So non-probability sampling normally deals with propulsive sampling, where a researcher selects participants from a sampling frame because they have the characteristic that the researcher desires. So say, for example, in psychology, normally the number of sample they need is only one, very few. Particularly on qualitative research, you can only take one, and they look for sample which is under these characteristics, which the researcher desires. For probability sampling, this includes simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, multi-stage, and sequential. So we'll talk more about this when we proceed to the next module that would be on the third week. You can also check this site, www.scriber.com, methodology and sampling methods. So after you collect data, you have to present the data. And there are three ways of presenting it, either textual, graphical, or tabular. In research, you often apply two of these, textual and tabular, or textual and graphical. There are levels of measurement. It's very important to determine the levels of measurement. So there are, the first level is nominal. Uh, normally, these are names, ordinal, these are orders, interval, these are scale and ratio. This is the same with interval, but it includes absolute zero. It's very important to determine the level of measurement so that you'll be able to determine what kind of statistical method or what kind of statistical method is applicable for this type of variables you have gathered. So say, for example, your dependent and independent variable are both nominal. So the type of statistical method you could use is chi-square, nominal and ordinal, chi-square, nominal and interval, t-test or ANOVA, and nominal ratio, t-test and ANOVA. Interval and ratio, it's correlational regression. These are just sample statistical method. So under organizing data, this is still under presentation of data. So after you collect, you present and organize. And your data might come in a uh, different type. If it's a categorical data, you have to present it in a summary table. For example, uh, age, height, gender, course, those are categorical data. So you have to categorize them, present it in summary, get the tally, and present the summary. Or if you don't want to present the summary, you can go for contingency table. Instead of using numbers, you can use percentage. Uh, say, for example, under summary table, there are 10 out of 20 male students. So in contingency table, you simply present 50% male students. Now, if it's a number, you have to present it in either ordered array or frequency distribution table. So I actually have a video lecture of organizing data. Uh, please refer to those notes. So that ends my introduction to statistics.